I don't do long division either. Just so everyone knows. I use my calculator. If I have to divide 19 million by 364.8, I don't try and do that on paper. I know how, but I let my computer do it for me. This is letting your computer just do something for you that eventually in the future will be like, well, of course computers do that. That's dumb. Hey everyone, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the community with eXp Realty, the greatest brokerage on the planet. So excited you guys are here today and we are going to be covering artificial intelligence today, right? So this is gonna be really exciting. What, what we're gonna be talking about though, very specifically is not how AI works or what are 6 trillion different tools that you can use. We're gonna be talking very specifically about prompts and what are prompts, how to craft them properly and how to use the interface so that it actually engages back and forth with us. It's gonna be really exciting and you're gonna learn some stuff today where you're like, oh, that's pretty rad. I didn't realize we could even do that. And then we're gonna to brainstorm together exactly how to improve this and how to have conversational dynamics with a computer actually make sense so that you can use it in your business. It's not just a cool tool or a schnazzy little bolt on tech. This is something that can speed you up. And if you've always been like, I don't know if I need an assistant, that's okay. You already have one. It's 100% free. We're just going to show you how to use it today. So this is really easy stuff. And then we're even going to talk about some things that might be a little bit outside of where you thought you might use it in your business, like drafting your budget or building uh, you know, a, a game plan for uh, losing weight, et cetera. There's all sorts of things that we can use this for. We're gonna talk exactly how this plugs into your business and how to leverage this with your clients and even how to get coached by AI so that you can get smarter and become better at your craft. It's very, very cool um, and very excited to present this. Today, we're gonna to be diving in. Now, one of the things that I put together today, because I know everyone likes to walk away with a resource, it's always nice to have something kind of in your hands, is I have an AI ebook that you get to take home today. Um, go ahead and put the prompts in there so that all you have to do is literally grab the book, copy, paste, and go ahead and, and move on with your life. This is not something that we need to make a lot more complicated. And what I realize is that everybody likes to have access to something after you come. So let me grab that link really quickly right here. So you guys are gonna have it. Now, if you're watching this on the recording, it'll be down below the video. So just go grab it there. Um, but boom, there it is. You guys can go grab that. That's the... Um, ebook with all the prompts in it. Now, I'm always resistant to doing that at the beginning because what I'm pretty sure is you guys are all gonna start reading the book and not listen to anything else that I say, which may be awesome. However, what I'd love to do instead is to walk you through the content. So here's, here's my promise. I'm going to explain how things work and I promise if you stick with me, this is gonna be a much more valuable resource than just trying to digest it on your own. I put the cut and paste stuff in there, but I didn't put all this um, kind of description on how it works in there. So this is gonna be really helpful to be able to do this all together. All right, so if you're just joining us, we're talking AI prompts for real estate agents today. My name's Jeff, um, and we're gonna go deep on this. So let me go ahead and pull up a screen share so you guys can see my screen. But before I do that, I wanna just ask, because we've got, a good number of people here on the live. I know a lot of people watch this on the replay as well. Give me a shout back if you're here on the live, if you have ever for anything used AI in your business at this point. You've done any AI at all. Just hit me with a yes. I'll start. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, Alex. Yes. Daniel Ramirez. Yes. Luis. Every day. That's awesome. Um, I know I certainly do. Uh, Christine Kites. Yes. Um, Casey Lynn, yes. Jordan, yep. Emily Stagg, yes, I love it. Uh, this nice phone number, yes. Scott says, yes. Okay, so a lot of people are using this. So the question isn't whether or not we're starting to see adoption by agents. However, what we know is that a tool is only as good as how you use it, right? If I try and screw in a screw and I'm using a hammer, it gets real complicated really quickly, right? Because I'm using the wrong tool and I'm using it in the wrong way. Um, 
And so ultimately, if we can use the right tools in the right ways and understand how they can get working the best for us, that's going to be awesome. For me, I went um, a, a few weeks ago to this very long training um, by a top digital marketer really covering how AI prompting can work. And my mind was blown. I had all these big realizations that I hadn't been using it correctly. And you guys might be like, yeah, yeah, Jeff, we're way ahead of you, which is awesome. Um, contact me. We'll have you teach the next one. However, my belief is that we're going to have some takeaways today because I I understand now that AI is a conversational dynamic um, bot. It's really what's going on, meaning that we can move back and forth with the bot. It's different. It's like a coaching relationship or an actual employee, very different than the way that we've been using search engines, let's say forever. You get one shot, you know, best restaurant in, you know, Phoenix, enter and you get some results there. That's different than how AI works. AI can go back and forth. So we're going to talk about that today. And I'm going to give you the breakdown on different elements of your prompts that you may want to include. And then we're going to play with it a little bit. We're going to have some fun, hopefully laugh, um, definitely not cry. And it's going to be a good time. All right. So if everyone's in for having a good time today, let me know in the chat. I would love to know that you want to have a good time. That'd be great. And we're going to go ahead and get started though. And I'm going to start off by pulling up. And by the way, I've created an account at ChatGPT on the free side of the platform. So for anyone's like, do I need to pay for something? Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the thumbs up. Yeah. Jeff wants to have a good time. Linda McComish. Yeah. Emily, thank you, Alex. All right. So we're all going to have a good time today. So check this out. I've got a free version of ChatGPT that I'm going to pull up. So all you have to do is go head over there. You sign up for a freebie account, right? You go to openai.com, openai as an in artificial intelligence.com and sign up for a free account. This is easy. We're not talking about all the paid stuff. Can you go pay for about a million tools right now? Yes. A lot of people will sell you stuff that's free, right? Anyone ever bought a water bottle? That's paying for something that is free. I'm not saying the bottle's free. That's what you're paying for. The water is. However, I know there's creeks, streams, all sorts of places, rain. So ultimately today, you have AI already. It's free. Stop paying for it. Here we go. I mean, unless you're power using it, and then which, which case, let's go. That's awesome. Here's my screen share, guys. So let's go ahead and pull this bad boy up. Everybody just got the link um, just a moment ago to this book of prompts says AI prompts for real estate agents. Let me see if I can zoom out here for you. Hold on, guys. Bada bing, bada boom. Definitely not working at the moment. Hold on. Why am I not able to zoom out? Anybody who knows more about things than, it doesn't matter. All right. So what you're going to see is we're covering a lot today. How to do newsletters, open houses, listing descriptions, writing your bio, neighborhood posts, business taglines, value uh, seller offers, all sorts of stuff, SMS marketing, uh, blog posts, scripting, right? If you want scripts for what do I say when I, yeah, we're going to cover how to get that um, and in the style of, it's going to be really fun today. And then other tools really going to cover some big stuff. Um, I have a nice description here at the beginning that I'm not going to read to you because nobody likes getting read to. But what I am going to cover is how how does this work? So the very first thing that you'll see here is a newsletter prompt and it says getting AI ready. So I'm going to stop for a moment and we're going to bounce over to ChatGPT here. But what I'm going to tell you is that the way that I was using AI for quite a bit of time was I was just putting a simple prompt in and getting a response back. Write a listing description for a three bed, two bath, super cute house at blah, blah, blah address. Or write a marketing email where I, you know, announce that I'm going to do an open house at blah, blah, blah. And those are great. We're going to show you some of those today and ways to really optimize and get the best result and also make it so that you never have to write another prompt. Just keep this ebook handy, cut, paste, fix a couple things and go, right? Much, much faster. So we're even saving you time on that, which is great. Um, however, we're also going to talk about the way that uh, ChatGPT works. And one thing I hadn't realized is that I could ask the platform in the same way that I could an employee to learn a little bit about me before we get started, right? Imagine I'm chatting with Joanne Graham and, and she says to me, you know, uh, or I say to her, sorry, hey, would you mind writing me a, a marketing email? And for whatever reason, she says, yeah, that's fine. I, I'm happy to do it. But then she says, you know, what would be great is if I asked you 25 questions about your business, learn a little bit more about you before I write this, because otherwise I'm going to make all these assumptions and it won't be very personalized. And I'm like, oh, great idea, Joanne. As it turns out, I can tell the AI platform to do that, right? 
and it will act just like a human. It will rip off those questions. I can then answer them one by one, boom, 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 give it responses, and it will use my responses. It will remember all of them, and then for all of my future prompts, it can draw on that first round of data to build even better responses for me. How cool is that? If you guys are like, blah, 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 not sure what Jeff's talking about, that's okay. We're gonna go, I'm gonna show you what it looks like, right? Sometimes seeing is believing. Um, and so hopefully that then it'll make a little bit more sense. And by the way, if I ever say anything stupid on here, um, just, just uh, you know, that's fine. But also stop me and, and be like, hey, Jeff, what the heck are you talking about? And we'll see if we can get it to work. All right, coming back to the screen share. So check it out, we're over here. I've got chat GPT open. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the, AI prompts for real estate agents ebook. And we're going to grab this first newsletter prompt. Now, what you'll say is it says, get ready to create content for upcoming prompts. Now, what's interesting is upcoming prompts means not this one. In other words, um, this is what's very unique about AI is that it, like a human, can understand, hey, we're going to do some stuff in the future. Get ready for that. But before we do that, we're going to do this, and I want you to ask me these questions. And that's really what we're handling here. Prior to moving forward, it's essential for you to grasp the intricacies of my business, customers, target market, and objectives. Construct your future responses. How cool is that? On the information that I provide, I aim to have you uh, have a comprehensive understanding of my content creation goals, et cetera, et cetera. Basically what we're trying to do here though, look at this, please ask a minimum of 25 questions to ensure that you are well equipped to handle upcoming tasks with maximum e efficacy. All right, great. So we're going to just grab this prompt. What are you doing, Jeff? I just copy and paste. Fantastic. Enter. Now watch. Certainly happy to do it. And here come my questions. Now let's see how many it goes with. I said no more than 25. Now, generally speaking, we're going to get the best responses if I answer all 25 of these questions, which you can do that in a separate document and then cut and paste your responses over here. You could do it in line one, answer, 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 two, dot, answer, answer, answer. You could do it like that. Um, or if you're slick and you know how to hit shift and enter, you can just go to the next line and have it all take up its own lines. Hopefully everyone's understanding that shift enter is how you go to the next line. So I could come back here to question number one. Can you provide me a brief overview of your business, including its core products or services? Um, I sell real estate, <laughs> right? We're not going to keep it too complicated for today. What are the mission or vision of your company? Uh, and so again, you would want to take the time to answer these. I'm not going to do this in front of you guys. So um, what I'll do is I'll just answer number one. Thank you for providing that information, right? So now it's asking me follow-up questions because it's not satisfied. Let's pretend that I did answer all 25. Now check this out. Now I go to part two. This is all getting us to a newsletter, right? How many people would love to have a custom newsletter that goes out once a week for the next 52 weeks that only takes you about five minutes to create? Custom to you, all about you, perfect for your business, absolutely personalized to you, sounds like it's in your voice. Holy moly, how's that possible? Here we go. All right, so then we would grab this prompt right here. Now what this does is it says, I want you to create 100 captivating concepts within my niche. Well, it already understands my niche, right? Because it just asked me 25 questions that I then had to answer, right? I had to play 25 questions with the AI bot so that it could gather some information. Remember, it remembers my responses and holds on to them for the future. So as it's done that, now it can use that information. By the way, this is a very thoughtful prompt that, um, that I've been using uh, to be able to create my own content out there. So make some adjustments if you want, but honestly, cut and paste on this is gonna get you a really good result. I'm gonna give you a couple hacks if you guys have things that you'd like to do differently in a minute, but you could just drop this onto ChatGPT. What's interesting is that's gonna kick you off a long list of ideas. Now, here's where it gets really fun. Part three here, and you guys, I can't wait for you to go play with this, but I've got some really big stuff I wanna show you today, so I'm just gonna rip through this first one. Um, assist me in crafting a strategic email newsletter schedule that's designed to maximize outreach to both existing clients and potential leads. Now, I know a lot of you are not doing this currently, but you could go program this inside KV Core. If you're already with EXP, you've got KV Core for free. You could program this as the next 52 week sequence and assign to all everyone in your database right now. You could have this programmed, guaranteed all in if you've never done this before, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. You could have 52 weeks worth of custom newsletters ready to send. Insanity. 
Do you have to hire somebody? No, you have to spend 30 minutes. Yes, worth it. Absolutely. So this is going to give you everything. One of the things that we've built in here, though, is some subject line delineations that aren't going to get you spam listed. So nine words or fewer, maximum of a one emoji, under 60 characters, no more than three punctuation marks. All of that is so that you don't keep landing in the spam box. We don't want to destroy your um, your deliverability rating um, is really what that's called for email. And so, but it's all, all dragging on that last content. And what we would do is paste those content ideas that it had kicked back to us down below here when we paste this back in and reprompt the system. Okay, this may sound confusing to you, but what that will do is it will kick out a comprehensive list for us of 52 weeks worth of potential emails that we can send out. The last step, once we have all 52 email titles created, is we say leveraging the insights that you have into my business goals, target audience, compose an email newsletter tailored for my specific audience. It should be approximately, by the way, I would recommend eh, no more than a thousand words. You can pick, but I would go no more than a thousand words. It's probably too many even there, maybe 500. Centered around the subject. And then what you do is you grab subject number one from up above that it just kicked off 52 of those and you paste it here. Set the tone as formal, casual, whatever your style is. So if you're more of a formal person, then say formal. Casual, that's great. Slang, that's awesome. You can even say in the style of Oprah Winfrey. It doesn't matter. It will figure it out and it will kick it back and sound just like whatever you say. So if you if your brand is you sound a lot like Kim Kardashian when you talk, that's great. Say in the style of Kim Kardashian and it will, uh, you know, it will sound like that. I, I don't know if I recommend that, but you know, who knows? Um, so she, she has more followers than I do. So maybe it'll work. Um, so you guys know, we've also given you when your open rates are, are the best and recommendations in terms of email newslettering. We don't want you to go over your thresholds. So once a week is about as much as you should do. Check that out though, with only four prompts. And by the way, this fourth prompt, you'll have to use 52 times, just in case anybody didn't figure that out. You would use it one per email. So really all we've done is this. We asked ChatGPT, ask me a series of questions so you understand my business. That was step one. Step two, we said, Help us to understand some concepts that would be really niche that are also maybe a bit of a pattern interrupt that'll really help me to stand out in the industry. Number three is we said now craft 52 really powerful email subject lines that capture exactly this using single emoji, less than nine words, et cetera, right? Like, so we've made sure it's SEO optimized. And then lastly, we write one email at a time. What I would recommend is you do this into a separate Word document, just cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, until you have all 52, then go over to KV Core, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, right? And deploy each of those with a one week separator and hit go on your entire database. And the next 52 weeks are good. The last step would just be set a calendar reminder to do it again next year. Holy moly, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's amazing, right? Pretty awesome. The other thing you could do is you could even set year number two up, do 104 of these and check this out, guys. In KV Core, just tell it to go back to the beginning of the sequence. No one will remember the email you sent two years ago, I promise. So just set it up on a two or maybe three year sequence and have it repeat. Hallelujah, email for life. All of your contacts will hear from you forever. And guess what? If you ever change it and you add another week or another week or another 52 weeks or another 152 weeks, it doesn't matter. You could still have it repeat at the end and now it will just stretch or elongate the duplication cycle. Then you're going to want to go into your KV core and set it up so that all new leads and all new uh, past clients, closings, everybody in your entire database always is subscribed to this sequence. Now everyone hears from you once a week, no matter what. Hallelujah. All right. AI for the win. Now we're going to keep moving, guys. Thanks for the smiles. I saw some pretty smiles on there. I appreciate that. All right. Next up. And by the way, I see some of the comments coming in. I'm glad you guys are, are reading through and seeing that there's a lot of value in this document. There is a lot of value in this document. We worked hard on it um, to make sure that you guys had a lot that you could use. Um, but we wanted to make it actionable. Cut and paste is actionable. You can actually just go use this, right? You don't have to understand it. By the way, please nobody try to type this stuff off a printed copy, just use the PDF. It has OCR. You can literally just cut, paste over into ChatGPT and move on. Um, the things where they're like this are things you're gonna have to change. So if they're bolded like that, we, you have to insert a brief description of the property. So check this out. This is if you're gonna do an open house, guys. Generate an exciting ad. And there's gonna be some stuff that you, you see in here. You're like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Um, 
an exciting ad for an upcoming real estate open house event. The property is a, uh, whatever you want, single family home, you know, custom rambler on acreage, whatever, located in Salem, Oregon. The experienced agent, right? And that could be Joanne Graham, offers personalized service and expert guidance. Uh, emphasize the unique features of the property, uh, create a sense of urgency to attend the open house and showcase how AI is utilized to enhance the home buying experience. Um, craft engaging. So what we would do is we would grab all this. We would head over to chat GPT. And I'm just going to keep it in the same thread because it really doesn't matter right now. And what you'll notice is it goes ahead and gives me a beautiful. Now, one thing that I know, I spoke with Lexi before um, I came in to do this session today. And she said, make sure that people understand that you're still, you still need to read things that are created by the platform and you may need to edit. And that is okay. The, the goal here is to save an incredible amount of time that it would take for you to do these same things, right? So like, for instance, if I read through this, it says agent's name. It didn't pop in the name. That's weird. Well, because I didn't pop in the name, right? Into my prompt. So I skipped that part. So it didn't work. But what if I like this, but I'm like, oh, this is cool. But I wanted, I'm like kind of more of a, a funny guy, right? And I want to be a little bit more funny. Maybe that's my brand is humor. That's awesome. So rewrite this, but uh, make it more uh, pun oriented and funny. Okay. And so now prepare to LOL, open house laughs and luxury living. Now, would I ever actually post this? No, but I want you to understand that you can simply ask for a rewrite at any point in time. Um, and what's, what's really incredible. Now we have a line in there, which says point to how we're using AI. You don't need to do that. You can delete that part of the prompt. If you don't like it, that's fine. It's just something that we like because it's so bleeding edge that we know that people tend to be drawn toward new. Newer feels better or more relevant or like you're staying on top of things. That can be great. Do you have to do it? No, you don't. But the prompt is right here. And if you just insert these brief items, it's pretty amazing what's possible. Right down here, this is something I wanted to draw your attention to. Does everyone see where it says right in the style of HGTV? Right? Now, what does that even mean? We mean that it understands, by the way, it has digested most of the content from the internet prior to whatever, six months ago. Um, and so as a result, it's digested all of the blog posts from HGTV, all of the ad copy, all of the marketing copy, all of the email copy, all of the everything. And so it understands that there's a kind of general tone or voice to that platform. Could you change this? If you're kind of more luxury oriented, you might say right in the style of Forbes magazine, or you might stay right in the style of Mark Cuban, or you might say right in the style of, I don't really care, pick a celebrity, pick a president. Um, you know, it does it, Abraham Lincoln, it's going to sound weird, but you could do it right. And it will tackle that for you. Now, if you want to be a little weird, if you're doing one around Memorial day, you might do something and right in the style of, uh, you know, of, of, president from the 1600s or 1700s or whatever. Sorry, it would have to be 1700s and, uh, and make it sound very colonial. And that would be hilarious. So you can always morph your content to fit your reader base. I just wanted to draw your attention to this. And one thing we've also asked for is craft engaging and dynamic language to attract potential buyers. Now, one thing I will tell you is this, um, rewrite, um, hold on. Let me, I'm gonna go back to the original prompt guys. And I'm gonna show you something that's really gonna knock your socks off here. So let's say that we take this prompt and we say right here, include elements of extreme urgency and scarcity as a digital marketer, okay? Now, when I hit enter, what you'll notice is that it will start saying things like, don't blink, this is your ticket. Don't blink is kind of an urgency element, right? What you'll notice is urgency alert. There's no ordinary open house. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. The doors swing open at this time to this time, but beware the clock is ticking. This won't knock twice. You can't miss this, et cetera, et cetera. Seize the moment, ignite the excitement. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So if we want it to be a little bit more lean for those of you who are maybe trying to really kind of get a sale to happen, ask for it. You can just ask for urgency, for inquiries, contact agents, contact information. It's pretty awesome. So all of this can be utilized. 
You can plop it directly into your platforms, whatever you're using to custom create your flyers, et cetera, or turn this into a social media post or turn it into a landing page or, 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 or. That's what's incredible is you can utilize this for a lot of different things. Email blast out to your sphere, et cetera. Um, even a text message if you wanted it shorter. By the way, if you don't like the length, you can say rewrite and make that um, half the length. Oops, if I could spell length, right? Now, what'll happen is it will literally just eliminate the least relevant stuff from there um, and it will make it half the length. Awesome. Bada bing, bada boom, half the character count, half the words. And what's interesting is it can do that mathematically. Absolutely incredible stuff. And so if you're not using this right now in this way, that's great. We are gonna get to some stuff that I am positive nobody on here is using. One of the next ones kind of knocked my socks off because I didn't realize this worked this way. So any website that's been around for quite a while that has legacy value, by the way, will also be able to have been indexed by ChatGPT or any other AI platform that has access to that body of data. What does that mean? I can use Zillow URLs as opposed to MLS data. This can't pull MLS data because that is live and active data that requires a subscription, but what it can pull is legacy data. So unless you've changed the number of bedrooms and bathrooms or square footage on your house that you're about to sell, guess what? Or somebody has, right? Um, then, then guess what? You could actually leverage the property information off of the Zillow URL. By the way, you could use a realtor URL. Anyone who keeps those URLs live, even when the property isn't listed, would work. So check this out. Write a listing description that creates an emotional response and is likely to make potential buyers want to schedule a tour. So um, uh, somebody give me a property address really quickly. That's a, that's a real property address. I'm going to need a real property address. Um, that you know. Feel free to just unmute. All right, we're using mine. Never mind. You guys are killing me. Either you don't know how to unmute or it's on me. All right, 5304 South Marine Drive. Woohoo. All right. Beautiful house. All right, great. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to kick out of there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that URL. I'm going to pop it in here as a replacement URL. Now, check this out. Include elements of scarcity and urgency, right in a blended style, blah, blah, blah. I'll pop my phone number in here, 541-557-ZOM-ZOM-ZOM. It's on the screen. Uh, my name. I'm doing this for you just so you can see what this one looks like. Fully filled out and brokerage. Yep. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Done. Now, I hit enter. And it is filling out this for this property. I didn't have to tell it what the address was for the property. I didn't have to tell it how many bedrooms, bathrooms. I didn't have to tell it anything about that property. It was automatically able to pull all that information right off the thing. And I'm ready to go for my uh, absolute listing description and at property announcement. Now, you might not like having... Uh, subheadings, that kind of stuff. So again, this is where it comes back to, maybe you want to do some more editing. That's great. Um, can you change these prompts? Of course. You can ask it to rewrite it in a more formal tone, less formal tone, more emojis, fewer emojis, no emojis, all that kind of stuff. But the first draft is going to be better than your first draft. How do I know? Because it happens in about two seconds and I've never written anything this long in two seconds. That's how I know it's better. Remember that success in business is often about leveraging your time in order to make money faster, right? And so what this tool has done is it's given this the opportunity to be able to leverage our time at a much more rapid pace, right? So somebody answer this in the, in the chat for me. That's awesome, Elon Musk. Um, how many uh, people have 24 hours in their day? I know that Marco covered this for us a couple of weeks ago, um, but... I'm just gonna tell you, I have 24 hours in my day. Um, I saw a couple of people smile. So I'm pretty sure you guys have 24 in your day as well. Here's what I'll tell you. Everyone has 24 hours in their day. This tool is making it so that your day actually gets longer without having to get longer, right? You're able to accomplish more without actually doing more. You might say, but I don't like this. This is only 80% as good as if I wrote it myself. Okay, but 80% in one minute versus 100% in two hours is much better. Take the one minute, keep moving. You're better off to honestly, you, you'd be better off to do 120 of the same thing across those two hours. And so that's what we know is now possible in business. And if you don't wanna get left in the dust, you're going to have to be on board with this, all right?
So I think that's real. That's really important point to make here. So that if you're kind of grappling with this, like where does this fit into my business? It's just about making you more efficient. It's not trying to replace you. However, we are going to take tasks that currently take you a long time or a lot of thought right out of your hands. And if you didn't know, by the way, it's wild what is what is possible here. Like seriously, you're all in real estate. Check this out. I'll just write here. Um, how much would whoops? How much would my monthly payment be on a 5.4% uh, interest mortgage um, over 30 years B. Uh, there we go. And then it gives me the formula. It calculates the whole thing, et cetera, et cetera, um, and asks me to plug in values. Like, guys, if you just didn't understand this, I, it recognized that I was missing a down payment amount, uh, whether or not I would be paying private mortgage insurance, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to ask questions and you need a real estate coach, you have one right now that's probably smarter than your real estate coach. I'm just kidding. But the, you have one right now that can answer these questions and can actually pull up legitimate data. If you don't know how to structure, for instance, a commercial lease, what are the steps? What are the steps to structuring a commercial lease in real estate. And we, boom, structuring a commercial lease in real estate is blah, 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 blah. And then it starts going. If you really want to learn at an unbelievably rapid pace, get in here and start learning a little bit every day. One thing I think a lot of people are using ChatGPT for is writing ad copy, which is great. I think it's maybe missing the bigger picture, which is that ChatGPT is a conversational um, learning tool. And I'm using it to make my brain bigger. That's that's the predominant. I spend a lot of time in it every single day, but I actually come in here and I ask questions and then have a conversation back and forth to seek clarity. I want to learn things. So it's a really, really great tool for that. I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. Let's keep moving through the book. All right, writing your bio. Many people need to spruce up on their bio, right? One thing that you can do is if you have a if you have a dog poop bio, um, go over. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my bio really quickly from my website, and here's what I'll show you. So let's say for instance I wanted to fix my bio. So I scroll down to where my bio is. I'm gonna grab it. I don't totally love my bio, it doesn't matter. So I come over to ChatGPT and I say, rewrite this um, under 500 words um, in the style of Tony Robbins, okay? And then I put colon and I just paste my whole thing and I hit enter. And then what it's gonna do is it's just gonna rewrite my bio in the style I asked for in the style of Tony Robbins. I just picked a person where I knew it would know that voice because it has a very like, defined voice. I asked for under 500 words because I knew where I wanted it, et cetera, et cetera. And it rewrote it for me. This is a nice spruce up. Could I go in and make my own changes? Sure. Um, could I just say, uh, perfect. Um, now add a lot of emojis because I like emojis. Now it won't change it. It's just going to go through and add emojis, right? That takes time. Now I don't have to do it. Perfect. Um, and so it will take care of that for me. Just want to make sure that you guys know that. The other thing that we can do, however, is go ahead and grab this prompt. If you don't have a great bio right now, or you're concerned that your bio is is uh, not very great, go ahead and use this prompt. Um, so right in the style of, I'm going to use uh, Frank Kern. I like Frank. And um, you could also be more generic. You could say uh, a politician which is a weird one, but it actually kind of does crank out some pretty good results, I've noticed. Um, it, right in the style of another one that I really like is an experienced digital marketer. It'll understand that one. We'll leave that. Um, with eXp Realty in Georgia, I have 10 years of experience. Okay. And my name is Jeff Richmond. All right, great. Now, I didn't give it a lot more information. I could, by the way, I could say, make sure to emphasize elements of this, that, and that, this, that, and that. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one so that you can see how quickly this cranks out an amazing bio that might be vastly superior to anything that you were going to spend time at. Now, it interpreted my digital marketing thing a little too literally, so I might have to refine it on that and ask for a quick revision. Um, but look at that, holy moly. It even ended with a great call to action, connect with me, don't just set her for a realtor, partner with Jeff Richmond for an experience, right? Really cool stuff. I like it a lot. So I would probably grab that and ask for my contact number, make sure you don't miss that kind of stuff. 
How hard was that? Not hard at all. And that's what we want for you guys to be able to go through. By the way, a good bio refresh. One other thing that you might pepper in when you're doing this one is add elements um, to ensure that my SEO ranks um, highly for my town on Google, right? Something like that. You could do that and add that sentence to the bottom of your prompt. That will also get you different concepts there. All right, next, we're gonna go to the next one. This one I like a lot because what we're trying to do here is just a more generic neighborhood post. By the way, there generally are, are, are a lot of neighborhoods in every town. So one thing that I know that I really like to do when I'm working with a client is to say, please make me a list of every significant neighborhood in your town, all of them. Well, how would I do that? It's, impo it's not impossible. Stop that. It's absolutely, it's probably 50 to 100 max, max, right? If you don't have a list of them, how are you supposed to know which ones you've marketed to, which ones you're farming, which ones are high priority, how to sort them, how to know which ones are most important, where the best turnover rate was last year, et cetera. Does it, a quick question. I'm going to shoot this one actually out in the chat and I'll be interested if, it, I'll be surprised if anybody has one. Has anyone ever done this? Have you ever made a list of all the neighborhoods in your town and then done something with that list. Let's say rank them, figure out how many homes are in each one. You know, you could set it up as a spreadsheet, et cetera. Yeah, Joanne, you're awesome. I love it. And the answer is yes. So wouldn't it be cool if I could just ask ChatGPT for that list so that I don't have to go do the work and figure out what all the neighborhoods are? Now, will it know every single one if a new development was started five months ago and just broke ground? No, no, nah, it's not going to know all of them. It's going to know most of them, though. It really is. It's pretty wild. Um, so we could ask it in terms of subdivisions. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot. Such a great question, Joanne. Thank you. Joanne asked, isn't it possible to get AI to do that? Yes, it is. All right. So Joanne lives in Roseburg. Hold on. Roseburg, Oregon, right? Okay. Um, make a list of all of the subdivisions, subdivisions in Roseburg, Oregon. Oh, dang it. Hold on. Let's see if it's going to do it. Oh, it doesn't Poor have to Roseburg. Because... Little old yeah, Roseburg. Sorry. Sorry, Joanne. It'll work in a larger, it'll work in a larger metropolitan area. Um, but here's what I would say then. Go ahead and make the list anyway, because it's going to be worth it for you. I think, I think that by the way, probably in the next six months, this is going to be possible in here. It's going to be able to pull that. Um, but what I would say is go ahead and do that anyway. So make your list. Once you have the list, right? So it's going to say one, this subdivision, um, whoops, et cetera, two, and you're going to pop this in here. Now, what's fascinating, guys, is then for each one, I want you to create a different neighborhood post. So that would be simply grabbing this prompt that we've already given you, and you're going to plop in the name of the neighborhood or location or subdivision or town. Let's just pick town for right now. Let's pretend you lived in Greater Phoenix, but you wanted to advertise to every town that makes up Greater Phoenix, of which there's like feels like 100, okay? Tempe, Mesa, Glendale, Scottsdale, Phoenix, et cetera. They're all different locations, but they're all kind of one big blob is really how that works. If you're in a larger metropolitan area, this is always true. So let's just say Tempe, Arizona. All right. Um, craft a post that highlights the local charm, blah, 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 blah. Um, and put in your phone number right here. So I'm going to do that with mine. And I'm going to put in my name right here. I don't have to change the brokerage because I'm already with the best. Cool. So now I hit go, and now what's beautiful is it goes ahead and cranks out a post all about Tempe. What would I need to do? Well, I could do one of two things. One, if I want more views, I could go out and take some video just driving around town, and then I could take this little blurb and put that in the chat, right, part of my posting, and then hit go. I could do a sticker over the top of that, all of which is possible directly in social media. All of this, what I just described, would take me however long the drive took me, or I'm gonna show you a hack in a minute, which is you go over to Pexels Video. If you've never been there, Pexels Video. Whoops, which I can't type, but we're gonna do it anyway. Free videos, videos, what in the world? Free videos. Um, so Phoenix, Arizona, drone. And here's some drone footage from Phoenix, Arizona. How would I ever get drone footage? I can't afford that. Well, these are all free to use for commercial reasons, by the way. 
commercial purposes. So if I click this one, um, I'm going to show you guys this because you may not even know about this. Now, is this AI generated? No, this is real drone footage. Um, but what I can do is I can download this in high def and then I can literally slap my logo over the top of it and plop this on social media as a post right now with music behind it. What? Yes. All of this should take me under, I don't know, maybe two minutes to have my blurb, drone footage, put that on a loop, throw some cool music, put my little guy, my little sticker emoji of me in the front and my phone number at the end. All of that can be done in under two minutes. Wild. And I can use ChatGPT to pull this verbiage. Now, some of you may already be a kind of a, a super stealth ninjas. There is a way, FYI, um, that you can actually ask ChatGPT to write an entire script to be spoken. And there are other tools and I can share those with you guys. We're not trying to go that deep today. There are other tools that will actually turn that script into an AI generated voice, including one that sounds exactly like yours, if you'd be interested, right? That's pretty wild. So um, that's pretty cool. And so I want you to know that that's also, also possible. Is it required? No. Is it cool? Sure. But does that... Does that matter? Yeah, 11 labs. There's a, there's a whole lot of these out there that can allow for this kind of technology to be leveraged in your business. So go looking for that. But what I will say is at a bare minimum, don't be spending two hours to draft a social media post when it can take two minutes. That's dumb. It's just too much time. You'd be better off to spend you know an hour and 58 minutes calling your past clients and two minutes making the social media post. You have the same impact on the social media post and you have a hundred times more impact on making those calls, okay? So it's a really, really big deal. Wanted to make sure you guys knew about it. Hey, do me a quick favor for anybody who's still in here, just post me like a, a thumbs up or a hi or something like that in the chat. I always like to know who's conscious and still paying attention here. I'll call you out for being awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, and I might have one more giveaway here at the end. Joanna is, Michelle is, that's awesome. Aaliyah, thank you guys. Leslie, Hayasa, Jeff, Christina, you guys are rad. Christy, or Krista, sorry, Christine, Pearl. Okay, you guys are all here. Awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. All right, uh, Ray Coburn, I see you. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do next, and check this out, this is gonna get really fun, we're gonna dig in. By the way, if you if you haven't saved this, please do save this. I use Pexels and Pexels video all the time. Pexels standard is for, um, just if you haven't ever used it, this is for stock photography. So if you live in Oregon, I know a bunch of you do right now, um, here's some pretty pictures from Oregon I could just use. And these are free use, right? What I notice a lot of agents are doing is they'll go to Google and grab a photo. Those photos are not free use. You could technically get sued. Would you probably get taken out? I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, guys. Chances are they just tell you to take it all down, but it'd be a real pain in the butt to go find all of your ads and figure out which ones you need to pull down. If you go to Pexels or other sites like this one, these are all free use, even including for commercial purposes, a lot of beautiful stuff. Um, you know, you could say smiling, hiker, you know, all sorts of stuff, and you're just gonna get stock photography. Um, so all this stuff could be used and modified to fit your purposes. So if that's helpful, I hope it is. All right, coming back. Back to AI prompts. So you're going to get your neighborhood posts. I would have one of these going out all the time. And what you could do is set yourself up a schedule. Every Tuesday, I do neighborhood posts. Neighborhood post Tuesdays. Rad. It's a really great idea. Why not? And then tag the neighborhood. Hashtag neighborhood name. If you really want to get real slick and savvy, then you can boost that post and geo-target it for that neighborhood as the center of your radius and do a half mile radius and then run an ad on that for clicks and likes and everybody in that neighborhood might have a reason to subscribe. At the end, add your own call to action for more neighborhood updates, go to this and use your KV core to create a neighborhood update for that neighborhood. By the way, really easy to do. So that when anybody goes there and subscribes, now they get a weekly email blast from you, but you're also getting leads as a result. Awesome, love that. All right, now what we know is that email and SMS are still great ways to communicate with people. Email has lower deliverability and less readability, but it's still very viable and it's easy to create an email list, especially with opt-ins. Much harder to create an SMS list, but if you can do it, do it, please do it. It's gonna be important in your business moving forward. What is an SMS list? SMS is short message. Uh, it just means your, your messaging code, text messages, okay? Why do you need to start building a list on that? Well, because we're moving into an era of permission-based marketing, meaning that people need to give you permission to market to them. It's a good thing, right? Because I get like 655 uh, spam text messages every day now. And so I'm sure we all do. And 
we'll all love it when that goes away, except it also means we can't do it once it goes away, right? So it's a double-edged sword. What are we going to do? You have to get permission. This is how. But once you have permission, check this out. I need a prompt to encourage homeowners to contact me and get their current home value or value report. Now, I'm going to give you a super secret hack that isn't in the book right now. Here it comes. There's an app called Reach. Some of you know about it. Go get it. It's rad. It's like four bucks a month. This allows you to build a list of people whose names and numbers you already have. You are not spam messaging them. You're personally messaging them one at a time from your phone. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm pretty sure this is 100% awesome and, and uh, totally valid as a tool to use because really you're sending messages one at a time. It's not, it's not a spam operation, right? Where I would send 6,000 messages at once. But it queues it up and it plugs everyone's name in. So if I was sending one to Pearl and then to Joanne, it would queue up the Pearl message and it would put her name in it as a merge field. And then I hit send and then it queues up the next one, but it's got Joanne's name, not Pearl's name now. And I hit send. So all I all I have to do is write the message once, tell it where to put the name, and then I hit send 55 times or 155 times or 555 times. How cool is that? How many people sent 555 text messages this week from their personal phone? Nobody, right? Except probably to your one client who's driving you nuts. All right. So what can we do? What would we send? Well, what about a home value offer? This could be pretty cool. As a realtor, so we're telling it right here that we're a realtor. This would be on a new thread. I need a prompt to encourage homeowners to contact me to get their current home value report. Please craft a sample prompt. Now, here's what's interesting. It is leveraging the entire history of the internet, including every training material by every top trainer, all of the Brian Buffinis and the you know Dick Tracys and whoever else is that. I'm just kidding. It's not Dick Tracy. Um, um, all of the top trainers, it's going to look at their stuff. It's going to pull the best of and put it together for you. Um, please craft a sample prompt that mentions that many homeowners' values are more than they'd imagined and includes emojis, hashtags, and my contact information. I appreciate your creative touch on this. My name is blank with the XP Realty. My cell phone number is this. And don't say the word worth. I just noticed that it kept saying what your home is worth, and I hated it. Um, you take that out if you don't, if you like the word worth. I don't know what's wrong with you. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So my name is Jeff. And my phone number is number. Here we go. And so I'm going to put that in just so you guys can see this really in action here. But check it out. Now I hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and pull that text for me. Now, as a text message, maybe I want to make a couple changes. If I'm being honest with you guys, I wouldn't make any changes. I would literally grab this. I would text it to myself, pop it over into reach. And where it says, hey, homeowners, I would say, hey, and I would put their name right there. I would send it to my A-list or sphere of influence reach list. And I would hit send 250 times. I hope you have 250 people in your sphere of influence. And all 250 of them get this from me. Now, you might have some people who respond, stop or unsubscribe. In which case you can respond, what do you mean? It's me, Joanne. It's okay. Now, if you don't like the message, and I want you to be clear on this, I'm just, I'm very comfortable kind of mass marketing. It's a, it's my space. It's where I come from. Some people are less comfortable with that, and they might want to rewrite this a little bit. That's fine. But take my word for it that a lot of what you're going to get back is super, super well written. And so at least at a bare minimum, I would start with this message, refine it a little bit, and then send it over to yourself so that you can send it out. Leverage reach, leverage whatever else, or if you're using your own smart number through KV Core, use that. That's incredible. Um, I always recommend for all of our agents, if you are going to use the KV Core smart number, please get your own. Hear me on that. Get your own. Why, Jeff? Because otherwise, if they give the number to their friend and their friend calls back, it now will round robin between every agent on that smart number. So about you and 499 of your best friends might have a shot at that lead. I'd rather it come to you. Does that make sense? With reach... You don't have to do that. So your own smart number is like 20 bucks a month. Reach is $4 a month. You can see why I push for reach. Does that make sense? It's a little cheaper uh, and it's all yours. But if you like building it all out as an automation sequence inside your CRM, that's awesome. Or use both if you really like spending money. That's good. Okay, next. These are fun, guys. All right, business tagline. All right, I need, I'm a realtor, I need 20 possible taglines. And what's gonna be fun is I'm gonna give you some um, helpful little uh, cheats on this one. By the way, if you don't have a tagline, I think they're really fun. And I, I really like them when agents have them. Do you have to have one? No, can they be helpful? Yeah, interesting. Um, so I am located in Chicago, uh, Illinois. I know 
Dion Branch is up there. We'll just hit this one up for her. I don't know if she's on here today. So as a realtor, I need 20 possible taglines from it. You could also include your name. My name is Jeff Rich, or actually I'll put hers in. Uh, Dion Branch. Dion's awesome if you need an agent in Chicago, by the way. So check it out. And now it's going to give me 20 awesome taglines for my business. So if you've ever, never created a tagline, that's awesome, right? Now, what I might say is I like those, but I wish it was like four words or less. Um, give me a new list with um, each option um, under four words. Uh, under Let's say under five words. That's more reasonable. Perfect. Now make them funny. So it's just going to give me some more kind of cutesy ones, right? Some funny ones, some whatever. Doesn't matter. So you can always make this refined to your personality. But by the way, if you haven't thought about a tagline for your business, that's a very fun way. It's also great if you're doing a logo rebrand. Um, it can it can inform your logo. So let's go back to the serious ones here. Um, like let's say that uh, heartbeat of Chicago living. I like that a lot. That's beautiful. Um, it's got heart in it. Um, it sounds like you're at the center of things. Uh, Sh Chicago living is really, really good. I, I'm change it to your town's name and make it work. So heartbeat of Chicago living, what we could then do from that is send that off to our logo designer or use one of the other tools that I give you at the end of this to have it go design you some graphics, leveraging that as your, and you could throw your name at the beginning, Dion Branch, heartbeat of Chicago living. Boom, done. Create a logo, instant, and then go ahead and get yourself moving. Moving and grooving. I love it. Business tagline, big one. Um, you only have to do it once, which is beautiful, but it's it's really great. Now, how many people would like to take another listing or work with another buyer this week? This is always where I know if people are conscious. Thanks, Liz, for raising your hand. All right, so I see you over there. So if you would like to have a new client, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do uh, SMS. So again, text message lead generation for sellers. So this, and we've delineated this into whether or not you have buyers actively looking in the area. Don't lie, don't lie. I hate it when agents do that. Don't lie, don't lie. If you don't have buyers looking in that area, then say you don't, that's okay. But check this out. If you don't have buyers looking in the area, I'm a realtor, write a short text message that'll get a response from homeowners indicating if they would sell their property for the right price right now. Do not say I have buyers, but rather indicate that their house may be worth more than they think. Include elements of scarcity and urgency. I am trying to create listing appointments and I'm going to send this out to a lot of people. Make it friendly and include my name blank and broker GXP Realty in the text. Okay, awesome. Let's grab that one and see what happens, right? So we're gonna put this here, um, boom, 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 and my name. So Joanne Graham and my brokerage. Awesome. Now we'd have to fix that little EXP Realty debacle there, but hey there, this is Joanne Graham from EXP Realty. Quick question. Have you ever wondered, right? Great, that's a great curiosity bomb word. If, you're, if your home could be worth more than you think. In today's market, values are surprising many homeowners. Curious about your property's potential? Let's chat. No obligation, just a friendly conversation. Your home might be more valuable than you think. Now, I would describe this particular text as something that will be more apt to be sent out to a cold list, right? or a first marketing message to somebody who maybe has opted in on my website, but we don't have a personal relationship yet. So what if I wanted to be like, um, make this more personal as I will be sending to people where I have a, whoops, a great existing relationship. Can it really do that? Yeah, it can. Hi, Bob, it's Joanne from eXp Realty. Hope you're doing well, quick question. Ever wondered if your home could blah, 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 okay? So it's a rewrite to allow for that. Now, might you want to change it up? Sure. Could could you leave it the way that it is? Yes. And what I love is that it says, reply yes to explore and let's catch up soon. Sometimes agents forget to include call to actions. What's beautiful is ChatGPT doesn't ever forget that this is something that you should be doing. Why? Because it's drawing on millions of professional marketing messages to help you to write yours. And you might be like, will that really make a difference? Here's what's funny. If you ask them to say this, you will get shockingly more responses with yes. Shockingly more. If you leave that sentence off because it makes you uncomfortable, you will get shockingly fewer listings. 
shockingly fewer. It's a fun term. Not at all. All right, we don't want that. We gave you a second one down down here um, with a couple little little changes. Um, this one we said, do not say I have buyers, but rather indicate that the market is speeding up. This might be the perfect time, right? So this time we're talking about timing versus value. Um, and then down here, if you do have buyers, I'm a realtor, write a short message, get a response, blah, blah, blah. Say that I have buyers looking in this area and that they need to find something that could work for them, right? Say that I have buyers. Let's try that one. Right? I'm not even going to change the name on this. You'll see. It'll just leave the name field empty. Okay. Hey there, it's your name from EXP Realty. Quick question. I have eager buyers actively looking your area and they're on the hunt for the perfect home. If the right offer came along, would you consider selling your property? By the way, couldn't you just print this off in large font? Or for that matter, here's what I might do. Take this bad boy and handwrite it and then photocopy it on fluorescent yellow paper and put it on every door in the neighborhood manually. Go around the internet. Don't be digital, go offline with this, but leverage ChatGPT to help give you some ideas about what should be there. So instead of laboring, how many of us have done this where we labor over what should be on the message? You realize you've you've burnt through three and a half hours writing a paragraph. It's stupid. Don't do it anymore. Give yourself your time back. Use all of your time to call people and have real conversations or go out to lunch with your top prospects or your sphere of influence. Take people to dinner. Go to go to places where there's a social crowd and be social and let ChatGPT take all of the heavy lifting off of this. By the way, can it do other things like write a standard escalation clause? <laughs> I want you guys to know this, right? For a real estate contract. Boom, done, end of story. Yep, and it will describe what it is. Here's the clause, blah, 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 blah. This is a pretty good one, not too bad. And then it even gives a little disclaimer down here is legally binding, so please advise with your broker. But how beautiful is it to not have to go bug somebody for this? You just need to know what it's called. Holy moly. By the way, if you don't know what an escalation clause, get ready, we're gonna need them again someday for anybody who knows what'll happen next after this market. Holy guacamole. It's going to get weird. Once all this pent up demand moves, guys, it's going to be like an avalanche. All right. SMS lead gen for buyers. How do we find buyers? Well, buyers are easy to find, but let's talk about it. So we can use this one. This is our more standard approach. Then we have one for if you see a new foreclosure, right? Somebody, some people get a little skeezed out advertising foreclosures. I will tell you, um, uh, for me, that's a real cornerstone element. They will create a lot of buyer leads. They're not all great, but if, you, if you're looking for volume, just trust me, advertise that you have a free list of foreclosures. You have a lot of opt-ins, a lot. Check this out. I'm a realtor, write a short message, get a response from people thinking about buying a home. Include elements of urgency and scarcity, make it friendly, include my name and brokerage, mention my expertise, helping buyers get the best price possible and the best home possible. Enter and here it comes. Now it goes ahead and writes my message for me. I don't have to write it. I can go ahead and grab this, pop it into my KV core if I wanted to send a blast out to literally everyone in my entire database, boom, send. Easy. Sometimes we make success so much harder. Like there's a really good chance, guys, I just want you to understand that I would take this, copy, paste, I'd fix that one right there. I'd actually put my name in and get rid of those brackets. And then I would hit send. And I'd send it to, I don't know, 30,000 people, something along those lines. So don't think yourself out of success. From that, you take five, six listings. It'll be great. Or not listings, sorry, buyers in this case. If you see a new foreclosure, check this one out. I'm a new, uh, I'm a realtor, not new realtor. Uh, write a very short text message that will get a fast response from people thinking about buying a home. Include extreme urgency and scarcity. Uh, make it friendly and include my name and brokerage. Mention a foreclosure. What in the world? What will it do with that? Yep, check it out. Urgent opportunity. Hey, it's blank from blank. Just spotted an incredible foreclosure with unbeatable potential. Time's ticking. Reply interested to grab details now. I'm telling you, that would get a lot of responses. If you copied and pasted exactly this bad boy right now into your KV core, hit select all, send us text message. You will get several people who reply interested right back to you immediately. They want to know what it is. You got the goods, right? They'll also save your number. That's kind of cool. 
Um, you can also use your reach to do that if you're not using your KV core smart number, just as a reminder, just as a reminder. All right, well, if you have a new listing, right? This is one that I see advertised a lot. We've gone ahead and created some revisions in here. You'll notice this is a big, long prompt. Why? I don't want you to have to write this every time, but I do want you to be able to cut and paste it. This is gonna get you unbelievably great results, okay? Act as a realtor, create a social media post to promote, promote a stunning new property for sale in my location. My ideal buyer will love, and then put the most unique, or desirable feature of the property right here. This is a big one, guys, because this gets left off by a lot of agents who are just like, right up, you know, three bed, two bath, this number of square feet for this house. And then they've been putting that as a prompt in here, but they forget to talk about what's most desirable. This is a type of property, right? You have to put that, that has number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and is blank square feet. Highlight these unique features on the property. Feature one, feature two, feature three. Include emojis, relevant hashtags, and my contact information, name, EXP, phone number, and make the post engaging and interesting enough for potential buyers to want to learn more. Contact me about a showing. Now, check this out, guys. I want you to see this because we really don't want to offend people who have any type of disability. And remember, this has been spoken to us about by the, let's call it the realtor uh, administration, right? Use elements of urgency and scarcity aimed to create an emotional response in the reader and do not use words see, walk, stand, look, or any other words that could offend people with any disabilities, including references to walking, standing, running, looking, seeing, stepping, etc. How many times do you read a posting where somebody's like, you're going to love walking around this property and looking at all the walls. And you're like, oh my gosh, did you even read this before you posted it? This is absolute insanity. You can't say that, right? So this is really, really, really helpful stuff. And what we wanted is to make sure that we avoid the, um, that we avoid the potential for stepping on someone's toes. Joanne, I see you smiling. Did you have something to add right there? I guess we should stop using the words you'll love because some people are heartless. Yes, <laughs> there it is. Joanne the jokester today, folks. All right, no, it's totally true. You could say that. But what's beautiful on this one and that I really do like actually is that it gets you a pretty great response. Um, but Unlike what I see a lot of people doing, like my ideal buyer will love, let me say this, um, the oversized uh, horse stalls. That's pretty crazy, right? Um, unique features. I don't know what they are. I'm just going to uh, leave it and see what happens. You could put the colors of a house as the unique features. But if the colors aren't the unique features, Ray, I might leave that out and just go for something else, right? Again, the goal here is to create a great, great post or property description or write-up, but without uh, pr properly uh, or, or preferably, uh, what I want to say is without stumbling into legal territory. That's what I wanted to say there. Not very often that the cat gets my tongue, but I smell like kitty litter right now. All right. Recruiting agents. What in the world? All right. So... You know, if you're growing your team, if you're looking to grow your brokerage footprint, whatever, you you might need to change this. What's interesting is this is a great prompt. Craft an emotional message to attract real estate agents to reach out to me about eXp Realty or your team name or whatever. And um, whatever you're growing, if you're looking to, to align with other partners, that's incredible. Encourage agents to vividly envision their most successful future while here, eliminating their biggest pain points, provide them with a clear call to action, get in touch with me by DM or by calling my phone number, uh, include elements of urgency and scarcity right in the style of an experienced recruiter who leads with vision and heart. By the way, this took us a while to draft this prompt. Use very simple vocabulary. This is to ensure that it doesn't sound like it was written by Mark Twain while he was, you know, really trying to be flowery. Uh, make it deeply personal and not salesy. The post should create trust between the reader and me. Make me vulnerable. Now, here's what's interesting, guys. You could use this as it is. And we wrote right in the style of Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, that one works for us. You use whatever you want. But because that, that's something else that you could change. But check this out. Enter. Now, this will just go ahead and draft a message. You could pop this on a uh, Facebook post. This could even be something that you read just on a video. You know, hey, real estate friends, ever felt like you've just been running on a treadmill, blah, 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 and you just read this, right? There's prompt software that you can put on your phone, create the video. It's already created the script. Go ahead and do it. Listen, DM me or call, blah, blah, blah. No strings attached, just a genuine conversation, guys. Go over your possibilities. You put that as a message, you have it out. You could do this in under 90 seconds. I hear people all the time, oh, it would take me so much time. Really? I've already created the script. All I'd have to do is sit here, put my phone like that and read this over the top of my phone. 
while looking at the camera, it's not that, or put it this way, if you're an Instagram fan or TikTok or whatever, this is not hard, guys. I just want you to understand how quickly this could go, okay? Not everybody's recruiting, so you don't have to use that one if you don't want it. Getting a price reduction from a seller. How many people have ever wondered, how the heck do I get a price reduction from my sellers, right? If you're, if you're listing a property and that bad boy hasn't sold and you haven't gotten any showings and it's been weeks, get a price reduction or try, okay? Price sells everything. How do I know? Well, because if you price that house at a dollar, call me, I'll buy it. Any house for a dollar, that's a guarantee. Unless it's, you know, got a bunch of legal action against it. All right. So check this out. Enter. This would be as an email. You could, of course, read this as a script, first responders. Yeah. So check it out. Hope this message finds you well. Wanted to reach out, just share some insights regarding the current status of your property in the market. I could just read this over the phone. I'd make it sound more personable, not like I'm reading. But listen, it's been 64 days. We've had zero offers. It's clear that there's significant interest in your home just from the online stuff. But to further enhance its marketing and appeal and generate some renewed interest, I believe it may be beneficial to consider a slight adjustment to the listing price. How cool is this? This is wild, right? What about if we want to give them some options? Now, this one I really like and to be honest with you, prefer. So check this out. At the end, what you'll notice, give them two options, a smaller, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill this in, 1% adjustment or a larger 3% adjustment. Now, it's gonna give us a totally different form of the same exact kind of messaging, but this time it's gonna give two options, a 1% price adjustment or a 3% price adjustment. It calls this 1%, this is the more conservative option, aiming to subtly recalibrate the price while potentially broadening the pool of potential buyers. How great is that verbiage? It's awesome. By the way, that is, if you ask me, that's awesome verbiage. Um, 3% adjustment. This is a slightly more significant adjustment, which could generate increased interest and expedite your sale. In other words, let's get it moving a little faster. Did I have to write that? No. Does it sound sophisticated? Like I know what I'm talking about. Yes. But it also doesn't have all the stuff that I see a lot of times from agents, comma splices and, you know, colons in all the wrong places, extra grammatical errors. All that stuff is left out. It just speaks really well. So you don't have to. You might feel like cheated by that. I'm just telling you, don't see it as being cheated. See it as getting 99% of your time back. So you can spend your time doing human stuff. This can be handled now by a computer, right? I don't do long division either. Just so everyone knows. I use my calculator. If I have to divide 19 million by 364.8, I don't try and do that on paper. I know how, but I let my computer do it for me. This is letting your computer just do something for you that eventually in the future will be like, well, of course computers do that. That's dumb. Okay. Might just to still feel uncomfortable and that's okay. Next, competing to win a listing. This is where it gets really fun. All right. So let's say that you're competing to win a listing. How many people have ever competed with another agent to win a listing and then either won or lost? So in other words, you've just ever competed at all right? They haven't all been rollovers. Joanne has had to compete before. Anyone else ever had to compete to get a listing? Ben Varney has. That's incredible. Le Leslie Hayasa has. That's awesome. I certainly have. I love that. I see some other hands going up. That's great. Pearl, thank you. Michelle, absolutely had to compete. Liz, yes. Ray, wholesalers, bidding wars. Absolutely. Linda has. Christine has. Okay, great. This is incredible. So what if, what if it was really possible for you quickly, if somebody was like, listen, what is it that you do exactly that differentiates you. Like, how are you different? Listen, all these agents are the same. They're all doing all the same crap, right? I can do it. Cool. Let's talk about that really quickly. I could be on the phone with them. Check this out. Listen, I totally understand what you're I'm going to do this in real time, guys. Okay. So let's pretend I'm talking to a seller. I'm on the phone and they say, what is it about you, Jeff, that makes you so different? I mean, gosh, all these agents are the same. I can say, listen, Bob, I totally hear where you're coming from. And, and I've got to say, I don't disagree with you. Many times it's hard to see what it is that agents do that makes them so differently but, you know, or so different one-to-one. -one. But let's talk about what it is that I do that builds a unique value prop. Look what's happening in real time, by the way, while I'm talking to Bob here. I'm getting 25 things I can pull from. Now, do I have to use all of them? No, I'm just trying to get myself a lot of horsepower, right? 
So what I might then start doing is just coming up here and start at the top and decide which ones I want. So listen, Bob, it, it, ultimately we're gonna do a targeted social media blitz right off the bat. This is where I design a tailored social media campaign. I'm gonna reach potential buyers where they spend the most time on. Look what I'm doing, I'm just reading guys. But it sounds like I'm a genius. I want you guys to understand how easy this is. You can use this as your script superpower in real time while people are on the phone. They can be literally talking to you in real time and you can just be looking at your computer and um, and use this as part of a script package. Incredible. What about for, for sale by owners though? Hmm, interesting. Uh, write 25 value add items that a real estate agent will... Uh, like me will do to help a seller get the highest net proceeds when they sell uh, instead of selling on their own. Interesting, okay, let's see. Now it's gonna go ahead and give me this. What are the things that I do for a for sale by owner that makes me stand out? Why would they actually list with me? Well, here's 25 things that you could be doing that they won't do on their own. Wouldn't it be nice to know what those are? I'm not even gonna show you what they all are. All right, you gotta go do it on your own, guys. All right, list 25 ways a for sale by owner can lose money. What? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding you. Check it out. Let's hit go. Pricing errors, limited exposure, negotiation challenges, legal pitfalls, inadequate property presentations, emotional decision-making, limited buyer pooling, finance issues, and complete market analysis. Holy guacamole. This is incredible. This could even be, you could, you could expand this into an ebook for for sale by owners and call it 25 ways for sale by owners lose money while thinking they're saving and print that ebook. Don't try and sell your house on your own until you've read this bad boy. And then take each one of these, take number 25 and say, boom. And I'll say, watch this, rewrite this and make it 500 words. What? Yeah. And now look what it's doing. It's writing my ebook one chapter at a time. I could have 25, 500 word chapters. Last I checked, that's a crap load of words. It's like 12,500 words. It'd probably be like a 50 page ebook. Now you think, here's what one thing I will tell you about for sale by owners. If you're gonna do print marketing for for sale by owners, the very best thing that you can do is overwhelm them. Overwhelm is usually what causes for sale by owners, 70% of them that list with agents to actually list. So if they feel overwhelmed, that's fine. Here's how you can create overwhelm. Create a guide to listing and selling your house on your own and make it 12 million steps long with the most complicated tools ever and make sure that they understand how legally liable they are in all this stuff. Show them exactly how to hedge all of their legal liability. But if you make the darn thing 200 pages, what are they gonna do instead? They're gonna hire you. This is a very common form of marketing across every industry. Here's exactly how you do it. This is how this is the 9,000 page guide to building your own web funnel or hire me to do it for a thousand bucks. And then you're like, I, I think I'll hire you because I don't, I've never read 9,000 pages, right? It's a common strategy. So check this out. You could call up a for sale by owner and be like, hey, I know you're selling it yourself, by the way, I'd love to just come and preview it, meet you just in case I have buyers. And uh, by the way, I'll drop off my guide to selling your house on your own. If, if you'd like it, I can just stop by. I'll, it, it's yours to keep, right? And then you just stack four reams of paper on their desk and it's going to be awesome. They're going to be like, what in the what? Um, so don't do it quite that big. That's a little too, too much, too much, Jeff. All right, next. Write a brief text message to a for sale by owner. Well, you could put every for sale by owner in your entire market in one list, a reach list, for instance, in your phone call it, I don't know, for sale by owners. And then once a week, you could reach out to every single FISBO in your market. Guys, I hope you're taking notes on that. Seven out of 10, seven out of 10 for sale by owners. So if there's only, well, there's only 10 FISBOs in my market. Oh, I'm sorry. So you don't want those seven listings. I understand. Somebody will though on this call and they're gonna send out those text messages. Once a week at a minimum, and those FISBOs should be hearing from you, right? Awesome. Take your 25 ways that they could lose money and there's your 25 weeks worth of communication. Hey, I always love to help my for sale by owner clients. Here's one way that I know a lot of them have ended up losing money instead of working with an agent. Um, this one will help you to, and then you just put one at a time. And eventually 
They're just tired of bad news and low offers. And then they call you. You've been reaching out and been sweet the whole time. That's awesome. All right, next. What about expired properties? I'm a real estate agent. Write a brief text message to an expired listing that's likely to get me an appointment with them to talk about listing their home. Now you'll notice we didn't make that super complex. We just kept it short and tight. But hi, hope this finds you well. Noticed that your listing's expired. I'm eager to discuss a fresh approach. It's still drawing on like, 200 billion points of data to put this together, guys. So I don't have to make my prompt six miles long in order for it to work. When's a good time for a brief chat or a meeting? Now, this is a text thing. This would work, but you're gonna have to send out a lot of them. Just understand that if you're trying to get appointments with expireds, a phone call is always better. But if you don't have a standing relationship, this could work, right? Or if you happen to just, you could also, what I would do if I was doing text, just so you guys know, print this bad boy out, make it generic enough. And then every time an expired hits, drive around and put one of these in a manila envelope in their mailbox. Well, my goodness, that would be very effective, FYI. Um, all right, let's keep going. 52 weekly blog posts. This one's similar kind of to the beginning when we did the newsletter. Um, we've made some slight uh, clarifications. I'm not going to go through it one, one little jot and tittle at a time because I know we're coming up on time here in a little while, but I wanted you guys to see this will generate uh, an entire year's worth of blog posts. You could do this two, three, four times and set up the next four years worth of blog posts and then you could schedule them to be posted. Where would I put my blog? I don't know. You could use uh, KV Core as a good example, right? If you have a blog post on your own website, that's awesome. Go do it that way. Whatever you want. But you can start generating SEO around this stuff. You could even start to do a YouTube video with each one of these. But now you don't have to write all the content. And if you wanted the YouTube video, it could just be you kind of like casually talking about what's said right there in the write-up. So this will do it for you. It'll make the schedule. It'll show you when to post all of them. It'll literally, and by the way, it'll even develop all of the SEO things. We have it set up to capture all of your heading tags, um, all of the correct number of headings, the correct word count, making sure that the SEO is optimized and that it's 100% unique so that you're not using uh, copy protected content. And by the way, I'm not an attorney. I don't know how much ChatGPT rips other stuff off. So work within your own comfort zone. There you go. Objection handlers. Now, this is where it starts getting fun. I wanted to give you guys some other ways to use this software because sometimes whether you're uh, maybe a, a mentor, let's say, or um, you work with younger agents, they ask a lot of questions to you. Maybe you are an agent who has some questions about stuff. Maybe you feel uncomfortable asking. Maybe you just don't want to have to ask a human being. It's just easier to ask ChatGPT. That's great. I'm going to show you some ways that this can give you unbelievable resources. And remember, it's pulling from the entire history of the internet. That's bananas. So like the best, it would be like saying, search for this on Google and then read every single article and then summarize all of it perfectly for me. And oh, can you do that in 1.1 seconds? Yes, here we go. Now we can. Write the 10 most common objections to listing with a real estate agent and a great script as a response to each. Anyone know what the 10 most common listing objections are? Well, here they are. Number one, I can save money by selling on my own. Number two, I had a bad experience with the previous agent. Number three, I don't want to be tied to a lengthy contract. Number four, I want to test the market on my own. Anyone heard these? I've heard all of them, right? I have a friend in real estate. Oh, for God's sake, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, but now it's giving you great responses. I had my home appraised. I know it's value. Listen, I appreciate your proactive approach. An appraisal is a valuable starting point, but market dynamics can change. Let's just revisit the valuation and consider uh, some recent market trends and comparable sales. Make sure that we're pricing it competitively. I could read this as a script straight up. No problem. Interestingly, I could say, write a uh, an objection handler for... Uh, I could say, I'm a real estate agent. This is going to blow your mind. Write an objection handler for, and then in real time, I could be talking to somebody and they say, well, I don't want to pay a commission. Um, and so I could say, listen, I totally, um, <clears throat> totally understand where you're coming from. And, uh, you know, my real thoughts on that, though, to be honest with you, is, is that the, the thought of paying a commission can be a concern. But let me share some insights on how working with me as you're, and now I'm back in the races. I could do it in real time. Boom. I was a little clumsy trying to do that, but I was, you know, 
We'll see, guys. We'll see. All right. Please write a great objection handler script for the following objection presented by a client. Boom. We could use that one. Right. Oh, look at this. What are the 10 most common for sale by owner objections? Does anyone know? I do. I can save money selling on my own. Yeah, that's definitely number one. But look what they say. I understand the desire to save, but studies show that homes sold by agents often fetch higher prices, covering the commission and putting more money in your pocket. Plus, I'll handle all the complexities so you can just focus on your life. That's beautiful. It's succinct. It's not overly stated. I love it, right? Could you do better? I don't know. Could you do worse? Heck yeah. Same for expireds, same with commission objections. Love this one, right? If you guys aren't used to fighting for what you got. Um, so let's grab this bad boy and let's see what it says though. Write the 10 most common commission. Hmm, interesting. Your commission's too high. No kidding. It's not too low. I'll tell you that much. Um, that's never what the clients think, right? I understand budget concerns. Let's let's consider the comprehensive services I'm providing, including marketing, negotiation, and a higher sales price. The commission's really an investment in a successful and profitable sale for you, Right? Now, if you're able to just rattle that off, that's going to be amazing to have this stuff at your fingertips. A lot of times, though, I think many people get stumbled up because they don't even know what the 10 commission objections they might run into could be. You right now don't know what number two through 10 are. It'd be nice to go type this into ChatGPT and find out. By the way, it'll be a little bit different each time, but pretty close. Write the 10 most common buyer objections when signing a buyer broker agreement. Holy moly, could that be relevant coming up? Uh-huh. What could they be? I'm not ready to commit to one agent, right? I want to see how other things go first, right? I want to date around, et cetera. I get it. I might find a better deal on my own. I'm not sure if you're the right agent for me. I prefer to work with multiple agents. I'm not comfortable being tied down to one. I'm not planning to buy right away. I want to test your services first. I've had bad experiences in the past. I want flexibility. Okay, great. So this is going to give me some sample verbiage. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. None of this stuff is legally vetted. It's not going through the legal department, but neither are the thoughts that are coming rolling out of your face when you just handle this without having given it thought first. So the nice thing is, if you can just come in here and give this some forethought, then guess what? You can do much better out on your own by literally using this as a training tool for yourself. Beautiful. How many people have ever gone door knocking? I'm just curious. Anybody on here ever gone door knocking to develop their business? I sure have. I've, got, I've done a lot of door knocking. Emily, yes. Uh, Leslie, sorry, Emily, yes. Leslie, yes. I have. Uh, Ray Coburn, he does currently. That's amazing. All right, so a lot of people. Um, Douglas Hanman, uh, Kiki Todi, awesome. Okay, so we got a lot of people who are using door knocking. I love door knocking. It's incredible. It's a great way to get belly to belly with somebody and, and start to develop a relationship. And if you're good with people, by the way, it's gonna work, right? So that's awesome. Sorry, I know this is awkward here. There's my, there's my shirt, if you were wondering what it says. All right, so... Now, what I would recommend is go ahead and grab this, this prompt, pull it over here, plop it into chat GPT, and give yourself a nice script to work with. Here's a door knocking script for you. Knock on the door. Look, it even crafts the entire thing for you. Homeowner opens the door. Hi there. Hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. My name's Jeff. I'm with the XP. Apologize for the interruption. Oh, hello. All right, great. You know, awesome. We can actually have a comprehensive script and see what somebody might say, right? What if I wanted to be more aggressive? I don't know, or less aggressive, whatever. But this one's gonna be a little bit more direct. Um, close harder for an appointment. I don't know. I'm just gonna show you some of the things that we could do here. But what you'll notice is it's still going to write in traditional sales parlance. It's going to leverage all of the correct types of things that could be in here, but it might use a more hard, hard closing kind of a technique. All right, great. I'm not going to read it to you because you can read on your own. Um, so go try those types of things. Sequential closes. I love this. I write this kind of thing for a lot of different sales processes that we use in our business, and I recommend it. Sequential closes is where I tell ChatGPT to write five closes that I could use in a row, each one getting slightly more direct and, and ratcheting up the intensity. Slightly more direct and ratcheting up the intensity. In other words, I don't take their first close or, or their first no. And what I'll say in here, you'll, you'll see this, assume that each close does not get a fully cooperative response and thereby the next close needs to reflect that as a script that a real estate agent could use, right? 
So here's the introduction close, then the benefits close, then the local market insights close, then the personalized analysis close, then the sincere consideration close, right? This is where we're going for the heartstrings. That's like the Hail Mary into the end zone, right? What's beautiful is it's actually drafting a sales process. If you don't currently have a sales process or know what you're even gonna say on the phone, maybe try this for a while and see if it would refine your process. Because what I can tell you is that consciously closing five times, if you had to make it through all five of those, you'd close 300 times, or excuse me, 300% of the business that you currently do. I'm gonna show you some other tools and we're gonna wrap with this. All right, these other tools are rad though. If, and I hope you are, you're building out your YouTube channel, which by the way, leveraging ChatGPT to write the script for your YouTube content is incredible. And, and get on your phone, get a prompting, prompting uh, it's called a, a prompting app or a prompts app. There's a lot of them out there. It doesn't matter which one you get, just get a free one. Um, and that's where you can upload text and then it will just come up on your screen while recording your video, right? This allows you to read the text without looking like you're over here reading a text while making a video over here, right? It doesn't work very well. People get skeezed out by that or where your eyes are here, right? And they're like, what's he looking at exactly? So, and then your eyes are like reading along and they're like, what is going on? What's wrong with Jeff? Um, looks like he's getting hypnotized. Okay, so as an alternative, use a prompt. You can have ChatGPT write it, but I wanna show you another AI tool that uh, we use on a very regular basis called VidIQ. It's not only an AI tool, but it, it coaches your YouTube channel, uh, operates as a Chrome extension, and there's also a web app. But you also get a number of free AI tools built in, and it gives you a few credits every month. So if you're not doing a ton yet on AI, or excuse me, on YouTube, use the free version. You don't need to pay for the big version, all right? Um, what are what's the what's the free version going to get you? Um, some title recommendations so that you'll know what SEO optimized titles look like. Some tag recommendations so you can make your tags match. Um, it'll even do a sample description, by the way, for you AI. Um, but also thumbnail images. What in the world? Yes, it'll create um, sample thumbnail images, um, and they're beautiful. They work great. Um, they're SEO optimized, and they're very likely to get clicks on YouTube. That's incredible. Um, so there, it, like like we say in here, there's a paid version. We don't make any money on this. I just want you guys to know about it. We use it. It's awesome. Um, VidIQ Create is their online web platform. Go to this site, and what you'll see right here is YouTube content on autopilot, um, AI content to accelerate your video creation. Pro create a video about, create a video about um, real estate, whoops, in Portland, Oregon, go. Oh, boo, I, I, did, I did this on the free one, trying to show you guys. Well, if somebody wants to do it, go over to vidiq.com slash generate, and what you'll see is it will do exactly this, there it is, this for you, right? It will write the description, it will write all of your sample text, your description, your keywords, your video scripts, et cetera. And then you'll need to pay if you want to keep doing it. I will say we have the paid version. I'm just trying to, I, I logged out of everything so that you guys could see what's possible. It'll at least give you, I don't know, like three, four, five of them for free, something like that. So it's good to know about. Um, and then openart.ai. The reason we're giving you this one is not because it's the best one out there for creating graphics, but because they give you 50 free images. And so I thought, wow, if you're doing a, like a weekly newsletter and you wanted an image per week, you could literally draft all of them except for two weeks right here. The last two weeks should just be like your, your picture or something. Um, so this is really awesome. And you just go over there, click it, sign up for a free account. They don't spam you or anything like that. Um, and you can get in there. Again, we don't have any vested interest in any of these. So that's it. That's what I wrote on here. Um, what I want you guys hopefully to have as key takeaways is that you can write in the style of. You can also ask for revisions. This is something that I think a lot of people don't understand, but that it's a dynamic, multi-directional process that's going to help you to develop your business to a higher level and save you an incredible amount of time. I have a dual monitor set up. It's open all the time on my other monitor. It's it's outrageous how much time this saves me. Even if I'm responding to a real human being, I might say, write a comprehensive response to this text message that I get from somebody that answers their question in a very comprehensive way. If it's something that I know could have just been researched, I don't any longer take the time to draft that response. I cut, paste it, and say, write a response. It writes the response like an assistant would. I copy, paste, and send from my desktop. I'm able to text message from my computer, so it works perfectly. I just want you to understand how massive it is to be able to save time this way. So where should our time be going? Not to Netflix. I'm going to tell you that much. 
and not to social media. Our time should then be, be going to actively pursuing real relationships with real human beings. If you believe, and I do, by the way, that human beings are going to be the real estate intermediary for a very long time, I believe this is true. I don't think we're going to get replaced by computers. But how do we stay relevant and then compete? The way that you stay relevant and compete is build a lot more relationships. AI should make it possible for you to free up time so that you can build relationships. It's not about replacing relationship communication. It's about building more relationships more quickly by leveraging dumb stuff that doesn't require your brain or your personality. Hopefully this helped you a lot, guys. Thank you so much for being here. We do this every single Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Hope you join us at the next one. Thanks for being here. If you're a guest, go talk to the person who invited you today. Learn a little bit more about eXp Realty in the community. We love you guys. All right, thanks everybody. Talk to you soon.